code interpreter in the Power Platform. I hope you find this very, very interesting. Unlike my two cats that have currently fallen asleep on their shelf behind me here. Anyway, the demonstration today is all about how we can use Python within the Power Platform. On screen right now, I have SharePoint. If I upload a CSV file into that SharePoint site, what's happening behind the scenes is a flow is going to be triggered. Now, when that flow triggers, it runs two prompts. Over on Dataverse, I have an app, and as I can see, when I refresh, we are loading records in real time from a CSV file that we've just uploaded using Python rather than add a row into a record, etc. This is calling the web API using Python in a prompt. Now, we're already up at full 500 records. Look at that. And if I jump across into my email, I've received a file. That file contains a pie chart and also an Excel file of which we have all of the sales records in there that were part of the original CSV. And I've conveniently highlighted the top transactions that are over $2,000, as well as providing myself with a summary of some of the key metrics around the top five best-selling products and the top five customers. Now, this is all using Python. This is what today's demonstration is all about. So if you're interested, make sure you like and subscribe, and let's jump straight into the demonstration. So Python has finally made it natively into the Power Platform via the code interpreter in prompts. Now prompts, of course, can be called from within Flows, but also within Copilot Studio, and it will eventually be available natively within Copilot Studio. But for now, it's in GA, in code interpreter, and I'm gonna show you an example today of two separate prompts, one to analyze a CSV file and convert that into an Excel file, but also, a secret feature, I feel, one that allows you to actually create records in Dataverse using a prompt, Python, and the web API. But if I jump across onto Power Automate into prompts, you can see that I have two prompts here, one to convert a CSV into Excel and also output a pie chart image, but another to upload my CSV into Dataverse using the web API. I'm gonna start with the Excel and pie chart prompt. Now, it just looks like a normal prompt. I've provided some instructions. I've actually built this by iteration via Copilot, explaining what I want to do to try and keep this simple, but also keep the context. You'll see I have some tasks in terms of the type of data that I'm looking to extract from a CSV file, including the top five best-selling products, because I'm going to provide this prompt with sales data, 500 individual lines about products that have been purchased by different customers. As well as determining which customers have spent the most, the top five customers by the total spend, I'm also going to convert that CSV file into Excel and highlight any of the transactions over and above $2,000. Now imagine if you're doing this manually, it's absolutely crazy that you can do this as part of a prompt. Finally, I asked the prompt to output a pie chart, again, with the top five best-selling products by total revenue, and I've asked for the percentages and the values output as part of that prompt. Now, as you'd normally expect, I have an input parameter. We call it CSV here. I have some sample data, which if I expand, you can see there the content of the sample CSV. But the secret sauce in all this is via the ellipsis here into settings, we have the code interpreter. Now, if you come across this feature and find out that it's disabled or grayed out and you can't turn it on, then you're going to have to go and speak to your Power Platform administrator. Now, if I quickly switch things over, put on that hat for that governance use case, if I jump over onto the Power Platform Admin Center, onto Copilot on the left-hand side, into Settings, you'll see that there is a code generation and execution in Copilot setting. Now this is an environment by environment basis. So by default, this capability is turned off. If you want to use this in a specific environment, you're going to have to ask your Power Platform administrator nicely to come in and add that feature. They'll simply tick a box and enable it. So back to my prompt, if I close this screen here, I can hit test and then we can watch what happens and explore some of the output. So we can see that the model gives a response involving text and images as well as some of the analysis. But if we go to the output drop down at the top here, 
as well as having JSON, which we've seen in the past, we also have documents and images. And here I can download a copy of both the Excel file and also that pie chart that's been generated. Now, if I download the Excel file and we can go and pop that open, we can see that we have all that data in an Excel file, not only in an Excel file, but also in table form. So if I go to the table tab there, we have a purchases table, and then we'll see that we have any transactions where the total amount is over 2000. It's highlighted in yellow. They're all my uh, big transactions that we've had. But also, if you remember, I asked about analysis based on the top revenue by product, top five best-selling products by total revenue, monthly revenue totals, top five customers by total spend. This is the amazing capability. By bringing a prompt alongside Python, Python is repeatable, it's code. The language model has written that for us. It's almost vibe coded it in effect, albeit we can't iterate over it at the moment. But if you're impressed by the output on this Excel file, even the fact that it's ordered these customer transactions by the customer number and then by the purchase date, which of course was something that I asked as part of that prompt, if I just move that slightly to the side there, we can see sort the data by the customer ID ascending and then by the purchase date ascending. How is this all done? Well, if I jump back into the prompt, you'll see I've got a drop down here where previously it was just the text prompt. We also now have code as well. And this is the Python. Now, at the moment, if I try and make changes to this, you'll see that I get a message saying you cannot edit in read only editor. Now, from what I read online and uh, on the release notes, the future release notes, it's telling us that this will be editable. So unfortunately, at the moment, you come in to prompts, you go and type a prompt, and then based on testing that, the Python is written behind the scenes, a little bit of vibe coding that you can't edit. But what it does mean is rather than relying on a language model to transform that data, we're now using Python. That Python is created when you test it, and then that same Python runs again and again and again. So you get quite a deterministic output. I will always get the same structured data as an Excel file, and I'll always get the same structured pie chart. But of course, it'll be based on the input. In my case, my input is my CSV file. I can pass in different CSV files through my agents, through my flows, potentially even through apps and I can get that fixed output. So very, very exciting. Now, if I jump across into Power Automate, I've built a flow that is based on when a file is created. Of course, I can drag the CSV up onto SharePoint, get the file content, and I can run two different prompts. One is based on the CSV to Dataverse. The other will be based on turning that CSV into an Excel file. And then using a parse JSON with some sample uh, payload that I've generated from one of the prompts because it's quite complex. I could have written expressions, but went with parse JSON. And then creating an array of attachments by using some expressions here, which I'll show just very quickly on screen if you're wanting to capture them and understand how they're structured. But if you've watched my videos in the past, you'll understand that I like to demonstrate how to write expressions. And hopefully you're an expert by now and understand how these things come together. You need to go and have a look at your run history of your actions. In the sending email, all I'm doing is constructing an email, but you'll see I'm using the output from the compose, which of course is an array that contains an attachment because the ultimate aim is for someone to upload a file, it'll run both of these prompts, records will get created in Dataverse, and also I will get an Excel file with that data that we saw in our test pane. If you want to see how the Dataverse uh, upload works, we'll have a look at that prompt in a minute. But for now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump across onto SharePoint. I'm going to drag and drop my CSV file across into SharePoint, and hopefully it will trigger this flow and we'll see it start to play out. So the flow is triggered when a file is created. And you'll see in parallel, those two prompts are being run. The first one is completed on the right-hand side, which simply converts that CSV into Excel. And on the left-hand side, we're running a prompt that is uploading records into Dataverse. Now, to kind of show that in real time, I've built this very basic 
app already we're up at 400 i didn't expect it to be that fast but we can see as i cl click refresh we're now up to 500 records and if we jump back to our flow the flow is complete so it's quite quick 29 seconds we have uploaded 500 records into dataverse using a prompt just by providing that prompt with a csv file now if i jump across into my email i have of course that lovely pie chart that's generated but I also have a file attachment. And if I open up that file attachment, lo and behold, I have that file output, including the sorting, the highlighting, and also the analysis and all the various tables. So that's been done by running those two parallel prompts, one to create the Excel file and the pie chart as output, but the other one, which generates the records in Dataverse. So let's go and have a look now at how the prompt works for adding records into Dataverse. So if we jump back across into our prompts and I open up that CSV to Dataverse, again, it's very much a prompt as before. I'm providing the language model with the copy of the CSV file, describing the columns, but then a bit more about the process, the fact that I want pre-validation checks to be done on the integrity of the data to check that all the fields are present and not empty to strip white space, etc. Now, if you were doing this using Power Query, you'd be going through your wizard and you'd be making sure that you have all these data validation steps in place. I'm describing this to the language model as part of the prompt, and then I am bringing in the fields of the table that I'm looking to populate. Now, if I want to bring in another field for table, I can use a forward slash here. I can go into the Dataverse and I can then search for my specific table, which as you can see, requires a lot of scrolling because I've got lots of tables, but I have a customer purchase table and then I could select one of these columns. It adds a tick and then I can add it into my prompt. And then if I flick across into code, and scroll through this, you can see that the Python is doing the checks and transformation on the CSV file. And for those that have used the REST API in the past, you might recognize the path here that is looking to create individual records in my Dataverse table. Now I did try and use the batch API. I put that into a prompt, I described it. I kept getting errors when I was trying to test it and build the Python. This is why I feel we really need to get access to the code. The fact that I can't edit this is a bit frustrating, but incredibly powerful. And I wonder where this is going to end up. If you've got any amazing ideas, make sure you let me know in the comments. Now, of course, I've demonstrated this as part of a file upload. The file upload then triggers a flow. That flow then runs the prompts. But what if you want to do this in an agent? Well, I've built a topic, as we can see here, convert a CSV to Excel, and I have the flow called. Now that flow has been changed. Obviously it's no longer based on the when a file is uploaded. And in fact, if I jump across onto that flow, I have a trigger when an agent calls that flow. I have an input parameter for file content. The runner prompt is basically exactly the same as before, albeit I've got a base64 to string here for the file content on both of these runner prompts, as you can see. Parse JSON was needed just so I could easily get access. And if I go to the respond to an agent, I've defined two file properties that return the last base64 content and also the first base64 content. I found that there's a file array that is created by this Python capability and the order of these files don't appear to change within that array. So I can target them either using integer indexes if I've got more than two or last and first if there's just one and two. And then I've output a file name as well. I don't know, I thought it was useful to pass that back to the agent because I use it as part of presenting that file back to the end user using a message node. If I jump back into that agent, you can see those output parameters that are passed back. I then have a message. That message has a file type. Within the content, I have the file. Within the name, I have that file name. And then I have a second message, which has the pie chart of just the image. So already on the right-hand side here, I have create an Excel file and a pie chart. And if I send that to my agent using generative orchestration, it'll identify the correct topic. It will pass that file across into that topic and it will trigger my flow. 
If we jump back onto my flow, onto the details pane, we can see 11 seconds ago that was called. Again, it's running through the Dataverse prompt. The first prompt seems to run a lot faster, creating that Excel file. But that's it all complete again. Back over onto my agent, I can click on that download link and download that Excel file and open it. And it's exactly the same as before, same input, same output. And of course we have that pie chart and I can right click on that and open that in a new tab like so. And we can see the breakdown there of our top five best selling products. And if I jump across onto Teams, I've given this a go here too. Now this appears to only work if the file is uploaded rather than attached from an existing location, but I provided a file and in return, it's given me the Excel file that I can download as well as the pie chart. So lastly, if I jump back across onto my Power App and do a refresh, you'll see the count jumps from 500 to 1000 by triggering both of those flows, either as a file upload through a Cloudflow or through a conversation with an agent in Copilot Studio we've been able to write to Dataverse rather efficiently. I think 500 records in about uh, 30 seconds is quite fast. And remember, I've not parsed that data. I've simply provided the CSV. I'm very excited about what Code Interpreter can give us access to within the Power Platform. And I'm very much looking forward to hearing what you guys all use it for next. Thanks very much for watching and I look forward to seeing you again sometime soon. Cheers.